Good to see everyone this evening. Our numbers uh, are still good in spite of the fact that we've got probably 50 or more uh, at Fort Hill Camp for the week, and uh, certainly we want to remember them uh, in prayers. But we're glad you're here, and I see we're blessed with visitors once again, and we want to thank you especially for uh, coming out and being with us. You know, we may have mentioned this before, but how many of you can remember the game, What If? Now, the younger generation, they don't know about these kind of games, but, you know, we didn't have video games growing up. We only had television, three basic channels. So most of our games were outside, you know, games like Red Rover and Hide and Go Seek, Up Until Dark, and things like that. But in the middle of the day, we, we would sit around and, what if? And, and, and somebody would say, well, what if you were an NFL player and you made $30,000 a year? Of course, when I was a boy, that was a lot of money. And you talk about all the things that you would do and, and how exciting it would be. Well, what if you were the president of the United States and, oh, well, I would do this and I would do it. And we'd pass a lot of time just sitting there in the grass in the backyard talking about what if. What if you found a buried treasure? And on and on the list would go. And, and you know, looking back, it didn't accomplish anything. It, it, it kept us occupied. And, and certainly we enjoyed it. And, and looking back, I don't know of any of my friends that made the NFL. None of them have been elected president. And none of them, that at least, have admitted to me that they've ever found a buried treasure. But, you know, there is a sense in which the what-if game is, is important to us as Christians because occasionally we need to do like Paul says to the, in the Second Corinthian letter. He says, examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith. And one of the ways that we can examine ourselves is to look into that spiritual mirror, if you will, to look into that spiritual mirror and just ask yourself some questions. You know, it's easy for me to sit and, and look at Brian or... Mark Meadows or Jimmy or somebody else, well, you know, what about them? But that's not what it's all about. You know, it's about me as far as my spirituality. It's about you as far as your spirituality. And so I'm suggesting we need to look into the, that spiritual mirror and we need to ask ourselves, what if? For example, what if every member of this congregation were just like me? What will we have? What if every member, for example, attended the services as faithfully as I do? Would there be a need to open the doors on Wednesday night and Sunday night? Would there be any need to have gospel meetings and other activities through the year? Because would they be here? If everybody was as faithful as I am, what would happen numerically? What if every member gave back to God with the generosity that I give to God? Would we be able to keep the lights on? Would we be able to maintain the works that we do, you know, foreign mission work, local mission work, benevolent work, and maintaining our building and facilities, and on and on the list of things go that this congregation said, would we be able to keep those up? If everybody gave the way that I give. What about participation? What if everybody participated with the same amount of interest and consistency that, that I participate? Would we have Bible class teachers for our classes on Sunday morning and Wednesday night? Or would everybody say, well, let somebody else do it? Would we have people to do visitation, to, to go into knock doors, to go to the hospital, to visit our shut-ins? What if everybody visited with the frequency that I visit. And what about Bible knowledge? What if everybody studied their Bible with the interest and the time involved that, that I spend? Would we be known as a people who know the book? Or would spiritual, biblical ignorance abound? You know, it's easy to look at others and say, well, you know, let somebody else do it. Let the elders do it. Let the deacons, let the preacher do it. Let the older members do it. But I would suggest to you that every member of this congregation is a cog in the wheel, if you will. Every member is a part of the mechanism that makes the church what it is. The family of God. We are children of God. 
And as we've said on many occasions, we all have responsibilities, and Ned's been touching on this in his uh, Wednesday night class on evangelism, and, and has made some good points in that respect. But, but we all have responsibility. It's not something that we can hand off to someone else and say, you do it. I don't have time. I'm too busy. That's not my thing, as somebody once said. No, we, we all have things to do. Granted, we can do some things better than others. But we need to stop back and, as Paul said, examine ourselves. And, and you, am, am I carrying my part of the load, if you will? A am I bearing my end of the burden? And I don't mean burden in a bad sense, but burden in the sense simply of the work the church has been given to do. If everybody were just like me, what would the church accomplish? Would the church still be here? You know, as we look around the brotherhood today, we see congregations many places closing their doors. According to the last statistics that I saw in one of the uh, brotherhood publications, over 100 congregations a year are closing their doors simply because they don't have the people to keep the doors open or they don't have the money to keep the doors open. And so they just simply stop meeting, stop assembling. And to me, that's sad. And it's indicative that, that somebody along the way was saying, let somebody else carry the load. Let somebody else do what needs to be done. And gradually, very imperceptibly, that congregation died out. And don't say, well, it can't happen here because it can, it can happen anywhere. But you see, if everybody is doing what they need to be doing, the work of the church will grow. The church will be strong. And certainly that's what God would have it to be. So again, I encourage you to simply look in that spiritual mirror and say, what, what am I doing? What am I contributing to the work of this congregation, to the work of the church universal as it is? Hope you'll think about these things. Perhaps changes need to be made in your life. Maybe there's some areas that you could improve in. But enough on that. We're going to close our devotional this evening by extending the invitation of Christ. Tonight, if you're here and you're not yet a Christian, you can become one, coming in faith, repenting, and turning from your sins, confessing that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and being immersed in water for the forgiveness of your sins, that God can add you to his body, the church, Acts 2 and verse 47. Tonight, if you need to obey the gospel, if you desire to become a Christian, let us help you in whatever way we can. Will you come while we stand and while we sing?